so much they just send me on. <laughs> Y'all welcome to your beautiful historic state house. We are here again for another great step forward. This is the ceremonial bill signing for Senate Bill 425, the financial transactions involving vulnerable adults. And those are defined as people 18 or over who are vulnerable for uh, any reason, also seniors, that's 55 and older. And this pr pr provides protection for financial institutions and others when they sense or believe something's going wrong, someone's being cheated or hurt, harmed, they are protected in stopping that transaction for, I believe it's up to 30 days, and calling the authorities and seeing to it that the right thing is done. So the, the primary architect was Senator Thomas Alexander. Senator? Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be out here this afternoon for this uh, bill signing, ceremonial bill signing. Governor, appreciate your leadership on this. Uh, to Senator Sheely, the chairman of the uh, Family and Veterans Committee, who this came through, and members of her committee they are here. And I think uh, Senator Young was the subcommittee chair, if I remember correctly from that standpoint. Um, appreciate appreciate their moving this bill. This is something that we've been working on for several years. Um, really, it's unfortunate that we need such a bill as this, that uh, we have to protect vulnerable adults in, in such a way. Uh, but we would not be here today without the teamwork of those that are in the profession, uh, those that uh, were worked hand uh, in glove with us to get us to where we needed to be. Those that are on the front line, those that are in the industry, the banking and investment industry, others, certainly the Attorney General's office was very involved in this too. So you can sense the team effort and it's about putting our seniors first or those vulnerable adults as the governor mentioned from 18 or above. And, and it's something that was brought to my attention being involved in uh, senior issues for a number of years. Uh, that unfortunately we had a lot of our vulnerable adults being taken advantage of by individuals uh, and and the tools really were not there available to those that maybe were suspecting something that was out of the ordinary uh, and so that was really the premise of this is to making sure that we're providing the opportunity to pause a transaction to pause to make sure that this is a legitimate there is a process to go through. There is protection for those that maybe are, are pausing those uh, significant uh, transactions that in the past, once they were done, uh, there was no, back, no way to go back and undo what those transactions are. And so again, with the partnerships, I mentioned some earlier that I think also of the Department of Social Services, the AARP, and many others, they're putting the good best interest of the citizens of South Carolina first. Uh, that's what I want to make sure that we're protecting those assets for those individuals that have wa worked hard for their money to make sure that it's being utilized the way they want it to be. And unfortunately, and I hate to say this, that so many times that uh, we see uh, that it's um, family members uh, that may be taking uh, advantage of the situation. So I would just bring to that to the attention of awareness, of making sure that uh, folks are, are looking out for these individuals uh, that are in situations uh, that, that uh, to take care of their well-being. Uh, but to have the banking and the investment industries uh, stepping up and doing what is necessary to help be a part of the solution and bringing things that will work. A lot of times we in the legislature will have the opportunity to have an idea, but it not be, may not be practical to work. And I will tell you that having worked with these uh, that are in the profession for the last period of time, we've got something that will work for everybody involved. So again, I just am proud to stand here today on behalf of the citizens uh, that we're trying to protect with the great team support that we have back here. And uh, certainly no greater individual that leads the Department of uh, Social services. We are so fortunate to have Michael Leach as the director of the Department of Social Services. The state of South Carolina is doing a tremendous job. Has been very instrumental in this effort as well. And it's a, a pleasure at this point for me to turn the podium over to Director Leach. Director. 
Thank you, Senator Alexander. Uh, good afternoon, Governor. Thank you for gathering us here today to sign S-425 into law to increase protections for vulnerable adults regarding financial transactions. I, I want to recognize Kelly Cordell, our Director of Adult Advocacy at DSS, who is not with us today but leads our agency's efforts of serving vulnerable adults. Kelly's team of professional works work every day across our state to protect vulnerable adults. Thank you to our many partners in this work who are with us today, including Senator Alexander for spearheading this needed change, and to Senator Katrina Sheely, Chair of the Senate Family and Veterans Services Committee, Senator Tom Young, Senator Penry Gustafson, Representative Jeff Bradley, and to Representative Bill Sandifer for contributing to this effort, along with the South Carolina Attorney General, Alan Wilson and his team, the South Carolina Bankers Association, and LP, uh, AARP South Carolina and LPL Financial. Did you know that na the National Center on Elder Abuse says that about one in 10 Americans age 60 plus have experienced some form of abuse? Vulnerable adult and elder abuse cost victims billions of dollars each year. The National Council on Aging says that up to five million older Americans are abused every year and the annual loss of victims of financial abuse is estimated to be at least 36.5 billion. The impact of vulnerable adults and elder abuse is felt by all of South Carolina's citizens. S-425 is signed into law will allow bankers, broker dealers, and independent advisors the authority to decline transactions and report suspected financial exploitation, ex exploitation of vulnerable adults and elders to DSS and to the Attorney General. We at DSS are keenly aware of the challenges that vulnerable adults face in our state every day with food insecurity, a lack of resources, financial exploitation, and isolation, which we all know makes them more susceptible to abuse and neglect. As I staff cases weekly with our Adult Protective Services team, I see the compassion, courage, and dedication to those who served on a daily basis. I'm thankful to the agency's APS team, and I'm grateful and impressed with their work and commitment to vulnerable adults we serve. It is up to all of us to say something if we see neglect or abuse, whether it's an adult, a vulnerable adult or child, in our communities. We know that APS is part of a larger system, and it takes the entire community to address abuse and neglect. So if you suspect abuse and neglect, please let DSS know so we can investigate it by calling our hotline at 1-888-CARE-FOR-US or, sub or submitting a non-emergency report through our new web-based portal at dss.sc.gov. Thank you. And I'm going to turn it over to John Cronin with LPL Financial. John? Thank you, Director Leach. Thank you, Governor. Thank all of you for your support. Um, I am proud to be here today on behalf of LPL Financial and our 2,000 Fort Mill, York County-based employees and roughly 300 affiliated financial advisors who call South Carolina home. Uh, I want to express my appreciation and support for all or for the support of all of the folks who played a key role in the passage of Senate Bill 425 to protect vulnerable adults from financial exploitation. As someone who works on these issues on a national level, I can tell you that at this point, with this legislation, South Carolina is on the forefront of that fight. Um, and as the governor and, and, and Director Leach and the senators have mentioned, it has taken a team to get there, um, including all of the financial services industry, who we are proud to represent um, in our conversations with the various leaders across South Carolina. Um, this bill is critical. It not only expands the tools available to us to protect vulnerable adults, but it also aligns us with key uh, South Carolina governmental agencies, such as the Attorney General's office and Dir Director Leach's office, so that we can all work together hand in hand to protect uh, vulnerable adults in South Carolina. There are a lot of folks to thank. Um, I, I, I prefer to, prefer to perform a, a short list that I know I'm going to mess up um, and I know I'm going to miss folks, so I hope everybody will forgive me for that. Um, but Senators Alexander, Young, Gustafson, Johnson, Sheely, critical leaders in, in the effort. Chairman Sandifer has been mentioned as he should be. Uh, Representatives Bradley, Jefferson, uh, and our very own Ray Felder from York County. Um, Attorney General Wilson and his staff, uh, including Jonathan Williams, Matt Gates, um, Director Leach, um, Neil Rashley and the Bankers Association, and of course our friends at the AARP. I will tell you that there is not um, all that many states that we could have formed. The partnership we formed as an industry 
association with the Attorney General's office like was possible here in South Carolina. So a special thanks to uh, Attorney General Wilson and his team, uh, many of whom are here to celebrate with us today. Um, lastly, I've got, to, I've got to thank my team, um, Devin Goodall from LPL Financial, Ian Wexler from LPL is somewhere right here, uh, and our local counsel, Rob Smith. Um, so thank you all. Governor, I think it's coming back to you. Yes, thank sir. you again, sir. Thank you, Mr. Cronin. Just a few things. Remember, this is, has been expressed. This is another example of communication, collaboration, and cooperation. It works every time. You get everybody together and everybody adds their insights, understandings, and experience. We're able to make great progress. Uh, this bill is a good one. But just let me give you a few, few examples. Why is this necessary? Here are the common schemes, and you've probably read about this. What this does is this gives the financial institutions, among others, the authority to put a hold on a transaction if they think something is suspicious. Now, to do that and if, if, uh, with, without this authority could lead to lawsuits and problems for the institution. But this gives us a way to nip things in the bud. How often have you heard that an elderly person has been talked into moving money, selling something, taking for what is presented as a worthy cause? Well, perhaps we catch the culprit, but we, they don't get the money back, and that's the problem. So this allows that, a pause on those transactions. Common schemes, telling a vulnerable adult or senior investor that a family member has been arrested and needs bail money. I was sitting next to somebody who got such a call one time. He's an experienced individual, and he was a relatively young man, and bought it hook, line, and sinker for about 30 minutes until finally, when his panic subsided, he thought, there's something fishy about this. So he never participated. They tell a vulnerable adult or senior investor that a family member has been kidnapped and needs a ransom. They tell a vulnerable adult or a senior investor unrealistic prices on gold, silver, or commodities, or during these times, they give this adult or senior investor an opportunity to invest in a new novelty project, product, something that is vital for our times, including personal protective equipment right now, play on their heart strength, there goes the money and they can't get it back, even if you catch the culprit and put them in jail. So this allows us to stop those things before they happen and to be done in a very effective way, Judge Young representing the Attorney General today. And uh, this is good news for South Carolina. So uh, on behalf of 5.2 million proud, happy South Carolinians, I want to thank this team for the great work they've done in putting this together. Now we'll try to answer your questions. Any questions? Any questions? <laughs> yes, ma'am. We're going to get into those after we're through with this. All right. Another Anyone partner, something to say? The other good partner is the Office on Aging, too, as well. I see them, and certainly they, they do a great job. And that was under your leadership, Governor, of establishing uh, the Office on Aging to become a cabinet level. That is correct. Thank you. With your help. Yes, sir. Any questions? Anything you left out? In that case, thank you very much. Oh, you got it. Oh, the important part.